I wanted to join the pre-med club, but I was laughed at by the pre-med advisor at the time because my GPA was so low. She told me medicine was probably not something that I would be able to do. My plate shot, they almost move up red. I drop top of my turn up. Hey guys, my name is Adana and some of you may know me as Adana the PA where I chronicle my experience thus far in PA school with weekly videos on YouTube. And I know many of you have been following my True Life series where I introduce you all to different pre-PAs, PA students, and actual PAs and give them the opportunity to share with you all their experience and insight on their different paths that they're on right now. So on my YouTube channel, I get a ton of questions about G. GPA. Does my GPA even matter? Adana, I have a 2.9 GPA. Is that enough to get me into PA school? Or hey, Adana, what is the best GPA that I could have that will guarantee my spot in a PA program? And I do my best to answer that question for you guys through some of the videos that I've made already. But once I heard this story, I had to share it with you guys. I want to introduce you guys to Samora. Samora is the PA student that is featured in today's documentary. Documentary, and she has an amazing story you all I know that you guys are gonna be inspired she is gonna to talk to you guys about her experience in getting into PA school and she talks about GPA and what GPA um, she had and I let me stop because I don't want to give too much away but she talks about the GPA question and so if you have any question whatsoever about GPA and PA school this is for you so stay through to the end the entire documentary listen to all of Samora's story um, because this is for you and I know that you will be inspired hi everyone my name is Samora I'm a PA student coming up to the end of my first semester I am originally from New York moved to Virginia and I'm currently in Arkansas now in school <music> I have two brothers, one sister who I love dearly, and growing up it was always it was always told that I had to be an example to my siblings. My parents were definitely a lot harder on me uh, to do well in school um, and also to be a good Christian. Uh, my parents are both from Haiti, and so if anyone knows any Caribbean families or you are Caribbean, you know that I grew up in a very strict household. On top of that, my father was a real strong believer. He, we grew up Seventh-day Adventist, which is Christianity, but um, I went to a Seventh-day Adventist school for most of my childhood, which means most of my friends were Seventh-day Adventists. I didn't really have any friends in the neighborhood. I was seen as weird by a lot of the kids in the neighborhood because they didn't really know me. I went to school, I came home, did my homework. Um, my father usually had extra learning for me to do, which was uh, 25 words from the dictionary or learn about a planet. He really wanted me and my siblings to just be the best that we could be. So I went to private school up until 10th grade, I believe, and going to public school was a shocker because I didn't really watch TV or secular television, so I didn't know what was cool, uh, what TV shows, um, what was the cool music, or even how to dress. I think my mother was still doing my hair, even. So when I entered public school at 11th grade, I was basically an alien was picked on. People only talked to me if they wanted me to do their homework or copy from me. It was an adjustment, um, but it was at that moment when I joined the real world um, that I realized that I was different and I didn't want to be different. Even though I was 15 or 16, I knew that if I wanted to be a regular person, I didn't want to be different. I needed to get out of this sheltered lifestyle that my father created for me with 
the intentions, with good intentions, um, based on his beliefs and how he was raised, but I wanted something different. I wanted to just learn everything that I could. So in 11th grade, like most high school students, is when you have to start um, picking your colleges. I um, decided that I was going to go away to school. I was gonna live, apply to schools that were either away or apply to live on campus so that I could just be my own person. And I knew that my family wouldn't be happy with it, but I figured they would be mad and then they'd get over it at some point and then they'd just be proud of me because for me it wasn't getting away so that I could party or do drugs or any of the other things that people do in college. I really just wanted to be independent and see what life was like outside of this home that I just was allowed to go and leave from every day. So like I said, I went behind my parents' back um, and the college process, I had to ask my father for help here and there, but mostly it was my guidance counselor. I'm probably pretty sure I lied, like, oh no, my parents are cool with me applying to this school and that school. So. Um, my guidance counselor really helped me with applying to colleges and um, I was starting to get acceptances and I kept them. My father would ask me and I'd be like, oh, I didn't hear from anything because I was trying to wait till the last minute to tell him where it was that I was going to go. And so that moment came because you know, he's not an idiot. He knew that I had to have heard back. And so this is when I told them that, hey, I got into a few schools. Two of them were out of state. One of them was in state in New York, but it was about an hour and a half away from my home in Long Island. Um, and so I figured that would be the best choice because I could live. I was far away enough to not have to commute back and forth from school. Um, but I was close enough if I did want to go home. So I, I made the decision to attend that school. And so I told, it was CW Post Long Island University, in case anyone wants to know. Um, and so it came time to tell my father, my parents, and I said, hey, I'm gonna go to Post, but I'm gonna live on campus. And oof, that did not go well at all. It's like, what are you talking about? I'll drive you every day, we'll buy you a car. I was like, no, I, I really want to live on campus. And so he told me that if I decided to defy him in this way, that he would not be in my life anymore. And I know to some of you that may be extreme, but growing up um, in, my father was raised to believe, and his belief is that a woman should not leave her house before she's married. I should stay under the safety of his guidance and, 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 and his home. And so what I was doing was basically defying him in his eyes. Um, and so I, I told him, okay, but I was steadfast. I knew I really wanted to, I was going to do this. So in August, when it came time to move to school, I packed myself up. He told me he wasn't going to help me move and I moved myself on campus. The first few weeks, my mother or my father didn't talk to me. It was hard, but I was, I really thought that they were gonna get over it. In the meantime, college was awesome. <laughs> I was making friends, I lived in a suite. Uh, actually, one of my very best friends to this day is a girl that I met my first semester um, in school, Afiza, who's also a PA, a great PA in uh, the Bronx in New York. And so I was, I loved it. I was involved in clubs, I was meeting people from other where some were, some believed in God, some didn't, but it was the learning experience to me that college is awesome. I, I, I think it was amazing for me and, and for any Anyone that's grown up the way that I did it's great to just be exposed to so many different things but then it came time for the holidays so we're now um, in November where we are now and I called to let them know that I was coming home for Thanksgiving even though I know I we hadn't really kept in communication up until that point but it's Thanksgiving it's a time for family I was looking forward to going home to mom's cooking and up, I should note that I kept trying to I would always call and leave messages from my parents and they wouldn't return my phone calls and I just figured oh they're still mad but a week before Thanksgiving break I got a phone call from an aunt of mine who um, let me know that my father um, no longer considered me his daughter um, and although that she disagreed with his decision um, that she she didn't think it would be a good idea for me she thought I would be hurt because my father's a very stubborn man so I knew that if that's the way that he felt if I were to go home he would not open the door for me um, and I don't think I could handle that so here I was, a freshman in college, um, now learning that the only family that I knew, because again, I grew up so sheltered, all I had, my siblings were my friends, my mom was my friend, I, those were the people, that was home. 
Um, and coming up on the holiday season, I had no home to go to, and that was very strange. I don't think I realized how much uh, the the being disowned, so to speak, from my from my family really affected me. I um, I think I was just like, well, this is awesome. I don't care. I'll I'll be fine. But spring semester started, and and it just it really hit me. It was like I have no family. Um, and I wasn't, I, I wasn't doing well in school. Um, I just wasn't motivated to s study anymore. Um, I, I started off, I always knew I wanted to work in medicine. I think I hadn't heard about the physician assistant field yet. So I was hoping to get into med school. So I was in all these bio classes, um, but I was not doing well in them. <laughs> I went to CWU Post for my first semester, um, but I had applied to go to Stony Brook, which is another school. Some of you may know because I have a med school and a PA school. Um, and I got accepted to Stony Brook. So for my second semester, I actually transferred to Stony Brook. Stony Brook, that's when things went downhill. C's, if I was lucky, uh, and those were in the easy classes, like the English, but all my hard sciences, I was getting D's and F's. And if anyone knows Stony Brook, it's a huge university, so it's really hard to have that 101 guidance. I had an advisor, but she wasn't advising me um, to stop enrolling in other classes or that perhaps I should take a break from school. And back then, um, you registered yourself and the system, it, no matter if you had failed Bio 101, you could register for Bio 102. It didn't, uh, dis, it didn't stop you from registering because I was getting Ds and, and you really shouldn't take the second part if you failed the first, but I was allowed to register for it. So this went on for about two semesters I believe I was suspended first, is the way that it works, and then I went to a community college, took chemistry, pulled a C in that, appealed um, to go back to Stony Brook, and for some reason they accepted my appeal. Um, and I got back into school on probation, and that last semester, I believe we're up to four semesters now of me just getting bad grades, that last semester I was officially dismissed from school because my GPA at this point, it went from like a three, Four, maybe when I left CW Post to going into Stony Brook at the end of my semester being a 2-4, then it was a 2-2, two, two, then it was a 2, then it was a 1. It's amazing to me because when I look at that last Stony Brook GPA and everything, every class was an F. Um, my GPA was like a 0.9 for that semester, which I did not even know was a thing. But yeah, I, I received notice at the end of that semester that I would no longer be able to attend school there. Um, and with the GPA that low, no school, I couldn't apply to go to any school, even if I wanted to. Um, so here I was, a girl that grew up um, smart, so to speak, right? Because I, I was doing well in school, all through high school, all through the first part of college, semester or two. Um, education was important to me. I knew I wanted to work in medicine and I had ruined my life. I had ruined my future of becoming a doctor at that point or, or anything in medicine because who's going to let you in with a 0.9 GPA? I couldn't even get back into school with that. The only advice that, the, the best advice my, my advisor gave me when she told me that I was dismissed was that I should probably take some time off from school to deal with my internal issues and then you know, re-enter and choose a different major. So that's where I found myself, I think this was 2007, out of school, no family, um, and yeah. Um, whenever I think about the way that I grew up, I think that I never had an identity. Um, and so my identity was what my father wanted me to be. Um, and so I think when I found out that I had no family, I lost my, the only identity that I knew. I was never allowed to form who Samora was going to be. I didn't know myself. So I guess you could say I was depressed, but it was more so I was lost. I didn't know what to do, who I was, where to go. And so I think with just those feelings of being scared and alone and, and really just lost, you can't really focus. You can't really focus enough to, to do well in, 
in science classes. And um, although I had friends, no one could relate. I, I felt they couldn't relate. They, some of my friends knew what was going on, but they had their parents, they had their siblings, they had somewhere to go. I didn't have any of that, and I didn't know who I was. So that period of time that I took off from being in school, I really worked on who Samora was. And I, and I was fortunate enough to, to have great people in my life at the time that helped me gain that confidence, that helped me find direction. Um, that helped me be the woman that I am today, but it was just self-reflection and just de defining who it was that I wanted to be and, and where I, what my goals were, what I wanted to contribute to life. After getting kicked out of school, I needed money because um, couldn't use scholarship money anymore if I'm not in, in school. Um, so I worked full time, not in healthcare yet. I, I Worked a long time for Starbucks, which I loved working because I loved interacting with people and meeting people. Um, worked my way up to assistant manager, um, but uh, was also tutoring, which is where I met um, the dean of the college that eventually let me back into school, which was City College um, of New York. I wanted to join the pre-med club, but I was laughed at by the pre-med advisor at the time because my GPA was so low. She told me medicine was probably not something that I would be able to do. And once I got back into school and knew that I wanted to be a PA, but needed to work in healthcare, um, I did vocational training to be a patient care tech. Um, and so I was working in healthcare as a scribe, as an MA. I feel like I've had so many jobs. Um, and then also still in post back and, and when I got rejected after the first time, um, and I was still in a post back, but I needed to take more classes. And I was faced with the decision of either doing a master's in science or a master's in something else that was health related. And I chose to start a master's in public health because to me, um, I'm very much of a planner, and so I figured if I wasn't, if PA school, if I wasn't going to get into any PA school, although I'm doing everything that I can, let me choose the master's in public health because at least I would still be able to use that degree and work, work in healthcare to some capacity. Though I wouldn't be a clinician, um, at least an MPH would allow me to do anything else in healthcare. So I chose to do the MPH. Um, which I found out now that was a big part of the reason I was accepted into the school that I am now, that they really liked that I continued my education um, and, and, and did well in that program as well. Um, so this, most of my schooling and, and happened in New York, um, but I was dating a guy, um, my fiance now, um, but he had to move to Virginia. And this, at this point, I was finishing up the MPH. Um, and when I was done with that, applied to schools, was still waiting to hear back, I decided to join him in Virginia. Um, and he is an engineer by trade, but kind of wasn't happy with what he was doing. And we, we both talked about starting a business, but it was gonna be when I was done with school, when he was done with school. But uh, we got this opportunity that kind of fell in our laps, literally, um, to open up a restaurant. Uh, and it was in a college park. We were living in Virginia, but um, the location was near the University of Maryland in College Park. And um, since I hadn't heard back and I was just confused as to where I was going to go in life, um, we talked about it and I said, let's just do it. Well, matter of fact, I got to meet up with Adana and I got to show her the place, so check it out. Expanding, what do you see Just from on a day to day basis? Radu and I change our minds because this was a lot of work. We knew we wanted to open a restaurant, 
um, an opportunity just kind of presented itself and we did so. We always thought it would be later in life. Um, and then we were so excited by this. We were like, oh, we're gonna have a chain. It's gonna be great. Right now, we just really want this to do really, well, really well. Yeah. And then we'll see. I'm just happy that we are doing well. Yeah, and, and I mean, I know I like I read a devotion this morning and it was talking about a season. So right mm -hmm. now, like this is his season, managing it, and your season is being in PA school. And then when you come back for rotations, You'll yeah. get many Yelp reviews. Yes. I'll be the first one. I'll be like, so, the prize were my, great. Samora, write my <laughs> name. I just want someone to mention me somewhere. <laughs> sure thing, absolutely. Samora gave me great Thanks. customer service. So if you ever find yourself in the College Park, Maryland area near the University of Maryland, Washington, D.C., or Northern Virginia, and you're looking for good ethnic food, come check us out, Pollo and College Park. We do deliver, um, and I'd love to have you try our food and let me know what you think. I still remember this interview to this day. I was super excited, fell in love with the school, um, and was placed on the wait list and did not get in, unfortunately. Um, called that school and they told me more of the same, just retake the GRE. And at this point I was getting very, very discouraged um, because I had post back I had to pay for out of pocket so I didn't have money to take more classes um, and I didn't I, I was working all the hours I could work to gain these these hours that are required by schools so my third time applying I really paid attention to where I was going to apply it was a surprise to me I remember the exact day um, I was at the restaurant we were closing up um, I think we had just been open up for a month now, so I was super excited, involved, loved what was going on there. And I get a phone call from a weird area code, and I pick up the phone, and it's uh, the admissions uh, director, I forget her official title, and she's like, Samora, congratulations, you've just been accepted to the PA program. And I'm like, huh, what, what? And I was like, wait, what? What, what, what's going on? And she was more excited than me. She was just like, so I'm gonna send you an email to make it official. It's just, I wanted to let you know what was going on. And so I was kind of stunned and Radu, uh, my boyfriend came out from the back and he's like, what's, what's going on? I was like, I think I was just accepted to PA school. He was like, what? I was like, I know, right? And so we were both kind of just there like, so what happens? And then my phone banged and I, and I got the email and I read it and I was like, holy crap. I start school in a month, uh, in two months, because August 14th was the start date. Um, and I honestly, it was something I wanted for so long, but the timing, I, I, we had just opened up a restaurant. I, I couldn't leave. I, I couldn't go to school in a month and a half. Like, what was I going to do? So I know it sounds crazy that I would even have to think about this decision, but like I said, I, I had already, although I had applied, Back in the fall, I got in all my applications early, which you guys should too. That does count and it does matter. Um, but I hadn't heard anything, but except for being interviewed early fall, we were now in the spring semester and I hadn't heard anything back. So in my mind, my dream of becoming a PA was, was done. And so to get this call to, to let me know that I was off the wait list was surreal. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to go because my, I had already closed off my, my heart and my mind from it. And so I think the school gave me two weeks to submit my seat deposit and my decision if I was going to attend. And so I discussed it with Radu, who's my partner um, in this business and in, in life in general, um, what it was that I really wanted to do. And um, I decided to, to attend because it's something that I had spent the last five to six years working so hard on a dream that I thought was taken from me because of the mistakes of my past um, and because I was a non-traditional student. Um, but I just, just like what motivated me to get back into school, I knew that I would regret it if I didn't move. It, the timing was not perfect, but a lot of times that's just the way life happens. And so because I knew I would re probably regret it for the less, rest of my life or would never get to see exactly what it was that feeling that I had that I've had since I was young that I am meant to work in medicine. I'll figure out how to pair these two now very different parts of my life. Um, but medicine has always been my 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 passion, my first love, and so 
it was hard. Um, it was hard to leave the restaurant. It was hard to leave my loved ones, but I, I decided that I was going to accept the seat and attend PA school in a month and a half, uproot my whole life and just move on down south. <laughs> It took a lot of research, but I went to every single school that CASPA had listed, and I looked for schools that said holistic admissions, or that they favored the last 90 credits um, higher than you know password credits. So I had a very specific list of, I think, 15 schools, and anyone can do this. It's, it's time consuming, but if this is what you have to do so you don't waste money on applications and so that you can make sure your application actually gets looked at. Um, and so I said, this is my third time applying. I have this list. I retook the GRE, did better on it. I think my, I took the GRE three times and the grade that I submitted last, I believe was a 313. So not terribly high, but not low either. Um, and I received two interviews my third time applying and one of them led to an acceptance where I, where I am now, where I am today. <laughs> It's not easy. I had this idea, I have this superwoman complex that I, I'll be fine, I'll find time to still do the administrative work of the restaurant, because I'm not there physically, but I thought it'll be fine, I'll study, and then I'll do all the things I need to do for the restaurant in the afternoon. Wow, that's not how it worked out at all. PA school is not easy. You have to study a lot, at least I have to. Um, but you know what, uh, after the first or second exam, I think I went too hard. Probably shouldn't say that, but um, I definitely killed myself trying to study because I really wanted to, I really wanted to do, I, I would rather do too much at first and then dial back. And so after taking the first two exams and doing okay in it, I, um, I kind of learned how, how much time I need to devote to studying. So my schedule is, we're in class most days from eight to five. I give myself an hour break, and then I study anywhere from four to six hours, depending on what exam we have that week. But I typically take a weekend day off, and I'll either just do something that's non-PA school related or something for the restaurant, or I'll go, I'm a real outdoorsy person, so I'll go hiking or running or biking. Um, but I start every single day with exercise, because that's the only way I can keep sane from all the things that we have to learn and the weekly tests. Um, but it's it's very doable. Just don't go into it thinking that um, you could still have a life because I have no life. But that's okay because it's only for a year or so, um, and then and second year is here and it's all clinicals. And what I've heard from my mentors in the class before me is that second year is a, a lot different vibe than the first year because you're not having to study as often. So. I'm about to end the fall semester. I feel confident that I'll do well on my finals, but it's, it's doable and I'm happy I made the decision. Uh, so at my lowest point, when I wasn't in school, I knew that I had more to offer than just being a full-time worker. I was working at Starbucks, um, but medicine, Everyone says this, but medicine is something that I really feel like um, I'm, I'm meant for. I'm supposed to help people and help people by being a PA. And so I use that belief in myself to, 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 to take all these classes, to invest in a post back, to invest in the masters that I did, because I really wanted schools to see that I understand I've messed up, but I am capable of this rigorous program. I, I am not the mistakes and the grades of my past. Um, I want to be this. I want to contribute and I want to help people. Um, and so I remember that every time I had to study or every time I was tired from working two jobs, it's like I'm meant for this and I have to show these people that I am. So I used that to just get me through and, and study hard while all my friends were partying or graduating and, and joining the workforce as teachers and engineers. Here I, uh, here I was still in school just trying to get in somewhere, but it all paid off. Believe in yourself no matter what people tell you because there's been a lot of no's in my journey. But um, you just need that inner drive and, and that belief in your, if you think you can do it, then you, then you can do it. I wanted to tell my story because um, I don't think you can get any lower from being dismissed or having a GP that's not even a one when Casper wants you to at least have a two, five or three oh. Um, 
if there is anyone that doesn't think they could do it or has been told no um or maybe you have a situation like mine you can do it and i'm not gonna lie and say it was easy um, because it took time it took me about since getting back into school um in 2011 sorry i graduated with my bachelor's in 2013 we're now in 2017 and i and i got accepted now um the road isn't going to be easy but you gotta re if this is what you really want to do um you you can do it you, you take the extra classes you stay in touch with um admissions teams you let them know that you are motivated and please ask me for advice i'm full of tips and things that i wish i would have known that i know now and and things like that but just don't let anyone tell you no if you want to be a pa you will be a pa you may not get in on your first try or on your second try but you just push forward during one of my interviews i met a girl that applied five times and i look at her like what like I, and she is the reason why i applied even a third time but i mean five times is crazy to some but why did she do it she's now in that program because she believed that she could do it so it sounds very cliche but if you believe in yourself and you're willing to put in the work no matter how long it takes because a lot of people it's like oh man like i just need to start making money now um you gotta ask yourself are you willing to put in the work to do this but please don't let anyone tell you no i'm living proof of that <laughs> Adana's awesome. I came across Adana from, I think, hashtagging black PAs or physician assistant, whatever it was. I found her page. I thought it was awesome. It inspired me, and I'm in PA school because, I mean, she's juggling a full family um, and still putting content for you guys weekly. And so I said, hey, if I don't have the time to do it on my own, and it was really important to me because because I know this is a time of year where everyone's waiting to hear back from interviews. Um, if I can't do it on my own, let me reach out to someone that I respect and think is awesome and see if maybe she could use this story on her with the platform that she's created. So I reached out to Adana. Um, she also agreed that she thinks that I could really help someone because um, it's not easy, this road. Even if you're a perfect student, it's not easy getting into PA school. And so she said, let's get together and do this. And here we are. Oh my gosh, you guys, wasn't that amazing? I told you guys her story was amazing. And I hope that you guys are inspired as much as I am inspired. Um, I wanna give a first really, really quick thank you and shout out so much to Samora for just being so transparent and just being willing and able to lay it all on the table for us because her transparency has allowed me to be inspired and I'm pretty sure that many of you are inspired as well. Um, so please, you guys, go ahead and support Samora right now at her different social media handles that were left in this documentary. Um, and also, if you are in the DMV area, go ahead and hit up her restaurant because they have amazing food and, um, you know, support her in her business. Uh, if you guys have not already done so, go ahead and hit me up on Instagram at Adana the PA. Follow me there and subscribe to my YouTube channel at Adana the PA on YouTube as well. Um, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching this documentary um, and hopefully you guys were inspired to just do more. Uh, if you have any suggestions on any other true life topics that you may want to actually see, please go ahead and leave that in the comment section below and I will talk to you guys next time. Later! Thank you, Adana, for letting me share this story. Um, like I've told you before, I love your page. I check in with it. I check into your page probably every day or every other day um, because you give me motivation to keep going, and I'm in PA school. I just love that you always have a smile. You always have kind words or motivation, and to see you do it with everything that you're juggling, I know I can and I'm in it. So I just really thank you for actually replying to me and, and saying that, yeah, I think together we could help those people that are struggling and trying to get into school or just need that little bit of motivation to know, look, you can't be as bad as Samora. If anything, take, take that away. While you're applying to schools and you're getting rejected, just know that someone who was way worse than you got in. So if that helps you get through the day, then yes. Say, if Samora can do it and she was terrible, then I know I'll get in somewhere. So, yeah. Daddy, daddy, daddy.